many thanks for staying with us. A historian with the University of Cape Coast, Professor De Valeri Botri, is describing it's describing the AU leaders dependent on aid as one of the mitigating factors against the Af African continent or countries in the African continent uniting. Speaking to Richard Kojo Nyako, the professor said teachers and schools must do more to make that happen. I think that the very idea of independence, struggle to have independence, is, is something that you know, support, you know, self-sufficiency, support self-determination. So it has always been there. Fight against the colonial regime, not only to have political power, but also to show the world and to show other people that you are capable of managing your own affairs. Do you think that this thing that we've started, we, we will be able to... Yes, I think that... Um, it's a reminder to us. It's possible. You can say it, but saying it is not enough. We have said it, but are we really going to work to, 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 to become self-sufficient, to become independent, uh, to become free from, 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 from grants and aid? Um, first and foremost, I think that there is a need for will, will power to do something and the determination to do it. Um, secondly, it is, it is important for students from the basic to the tertiary to understand that Ghana and many African countries are not independent. And so there is a need for us to have independence, which means we must now fight, we must start a new, you know, <laughs> liberation movement, decolonization movement. So all the independent day celebration and the other we've been marking across the African continent, they are, they are needless because we are not there yet? It is not, a, it, I'm not saying they are needless. They, they remind us of something we have done in the past. They remind us of, of uh, a certain level of independence that was given, was attained, but not total independence. So they, they remind us. Um, but at, we must also use the opportunity and time to, to educate ourselves into understanding that there is a need for us to have total independence. Um, so it, it, it's important for, for students to, to be educated on this. Because once you tell someone, uh, if a person doesn't know he or she is suffering from malaria, that person will definitely not take steps to cure him or herself from malaria. But if you tell a person or the person knows that he is suffering from malaria, then he will take steps. So in this case, if we understand that we're not independent, then we'll strive to have independence. And independence is the stage where you are free from, 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 from um, the... the, 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 the the gifts uh, and, 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 and the money that you receive and the loans and so on and so forth. We all need some kind of aid. No country is, is an, I, I mean, countries are islands, but we, we, we depend on others for support. Humanitarian aid is there. But when you make, you become someone who survives, who, who, who survives, not live, as I, 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 I said, you, you, not someone who, or count that does not live, you know, um, by and from its own efforts, but you, you depend on, on, on the checks and, 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 and the gifts and so survive on them, then you, 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 want, you will not be respected. Um, so there is a need for pan-African education. For, for students to be educated and taught from the basics to the tertiary in, in institutions levels to understand the need for us to first rethink our positions as Africans we have a common destiny we need to come together and pull our resources together we need to integrate unite and we need to understand that neocolonialism is at work and we need to find ways to fight against it. These must come through our, our everyday actions. You know, um, what we do to 
one another, how we treat ourselves, how we put, we put our, our national interests first, how we treat the environment, um, not being partisan, you know, not being partisan because parties are not, they are not nations. See, parties engage in, 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 in this kind of struggle for power, right? But first and foremost, we must understand that we have chosen to be part of a nation and we must serve that nation first before we serve the parties. Very, very important. See, the idea of, of becoming mature as human, we start as babies, right? And we grow. And we say, now nah, I want to go, I want to be on my own. Now nah, I want to have my own house. Now nah, I want to start my own family. It is part of evolution, cultural evolution, political evolution. And so we, or Africans, did not invite the West to come and colonize. As part of Western imperialism, of course today you have Eastern imperialism, they wanted to basically come in and take you know, certain things from the continent, Africa, which they did. But we have, we came to the understanding that they had to go. But now we know that they have not left totally. So we must continue, you know, searching um, for ways to actually um, realize our maturity, one of which will show or demonstrate to, to all of the world, or all people, that yes, we, we, we can do it. Sankara did it. So some people say, give me a, a classical example in Africa, where a country was able to, to move away from, from aid. Sankara did it in Burkina Faso, which once upon a time was Upper Volta. He took power in 1983 as part of a coup d'etat which in fact was supported by the, 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 the majority of Burkina Bay people and all the Voltaic people at the time because he changed the name from Burkina, uh, Upper Volta to Burkina Faso, land of upright people. Even the name that he chose for the country was symbolic but at the same time it was a tool to inspire the people to move away from the old crooked ways to become to join a new path that was was straight. Sankara, within four years, because he ruled from 83 to 87, he was able to make Burkina Faso self-sufficient in terms of food production. He 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 immunized, you know, Burkina Bays. He he empowered women. He 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 made them to focus on irrigation. He made them to, to you know, produce their own cotton, turn the cotton into, 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 into um, uh, uh, textiles, produce dresses from, from the textiles they were producing Burkina Bay, consuming Burkina Bay. He did it. And this did not really go down well with, with, with some imperial forces at the time, especially France, because France exerted a new colonial control over Upper Volta, and Sankara disrupted it. And that is why some kind of conspiracy, you know, went on and led to the assassination of Sankara. So Sankara demonstrated that it was possible. And he, in fact, he spoke to members of the Organization of African Unity, African leaders at the time, at one meeting, he said, if we all come together, we will be able to, you know, throw away the, the chains of new colonialism. But of course, many African leaders at the time, they didn't support him, and that led to his assassination. Gaddafi also s suffered the same fate as Sankara, and, and, and others, so it is doable. Do we have that potent force, that powerful force behind the African Union to achieve whatever we would want to do, like having one currency? Um, you cited the example of Nkrumah, Sankara, Gaddafi. Do we have such leaders now that will be able to get us there? I think
think that the human beings are there. Um, I can't really, you know, get into their psyche to know exactly what is going on in there. In terms of the developments, the, the pace of development that are ongoing in the various countries and the, the African Union as a whole, um, that, that is on, on the level I must. Well, I can see a person like uh, Paul Kagame, you know, you know, articulating strongly that there is a need for this integration project to be sustained and the idea of integration realized and it, he believes that it should be done as, 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 as quickly as possible. Um, but I don't know if he really means what he's saying. Uh, many many African leaders have said this also before, but we've, we 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 are witnesses. I can say that real integration, even even at the REC levels, we have not really seen real integration there. For example, ECOWAS, right, which is a regional economic community. I mean, the idea ultimately that came up, you know after a lot of deliberations, the Lagos Plan of Action and Abuja Treaty, which was to lead to the African Economic Community, was that RECs had to become the building blocks for the African Economic Community. So ECOWAS will maybe join with uh, the regional economic community in Central Africa to create one block. And then, you know, the North will join with the, with the East and so on and so forth until we get the African Economic Community. But what we see is that, um, for example, in the context of ECOWAS, we have seen a lot of, of, of meetings, we have seen speeches delivered, the idea of creating the eco, you know, and so on and so forth. But since the 1970s, what, what is really keeping, keeping the African leaders from, from really bringing up out the eco? What we have seen is the, is the passport right but you still go through a lot of problems when you have one across from Ghana to Togo right the protocols are there why is it that we have not really been able to implement them very well in a strong way and effectively right so I think that the idea of protecting you know the interest and, 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 and not, not, not wanting to let go the, of part of the sovereignty of West African countries and also African countries. Um, the, these are part of the, of the things that are, are impeding real integration. But I think that um, African, many African leaders have to be told by, by the young ones especially that the 50-something African countries can do it alone, individually. They cannot do it alone. It's important for some kind of synergy to go on, and real synergy, not just theorizing and talking about it, but, but actually practicing it. What will bring about this synergy and the way forward? I mean, I think it's, I, it is everything as to be seen from the perspective of materialism. God or a goddess will not do it. It's not going to come from the skies. No outside economic and political power will do it because it will, it will not be in, the, in their interest. It is something that must be done by people who refer to themselves as Africans. People who call themselves Africans. They must actually do this, right? So if they decide that they will not do it, it's not gonna happen. But it is important this integration project is important and the unity is necessary. It must happen, right? It must happen. Otherwise, neocolonialism will continue to whack and, 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 and dehumanize 
people of this continent and also people who may not be on this continent but are identified by other people as people of African descent. I mean members of the African diaspora. That is where they will still suffer racism and so on and so forth. The whole idea of Black Lives Matter, matter will, 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 not, will just be just anthemic. We'll talk about it, but it wouldn't change anything so, for the so, Black life. Exactly. Um, I said that was my final question, but um, <laughs> the Africans in the diaspora, what can they do to speed up what we need? Because they are exposed to a lot of things in the development. I think that, well, first and foremost, what they can do is, is endeavor to, 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 to visit you know, the African continent and, and learn and understand the African situation. Um, they have gone through a lot in the African diaspora, slavery, uh, discrimination, racism, and so on and so forth, even today. Um, but in the context of the AU and AU parlance, the African diaspora is referred to as the sixth region, right? So you have North, East, South, West, Central, and the sixth region. Um, so it should not just be a confirmant, you know, it should not be some, a, a label that has been given to the diaspora and members of the diaspora by the African Union and, and continental Africans, right? The, the, the diasporic members should accept that they are part of the African continent. They, they are not on it, but they in fact represent an extension of it. And so there's a sit region. And so they must now aspire to, to actually come and, and, and get involved in the struggles, get involved, and some of them are doing it, get involved in the AU deliberations. Um, and, 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 and commit their intellectual abilities, financial, you know, um, resources uh, and, 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 and skills to, 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 to shape in, you know, the economy, the politics of the continent. Um, and I think that, that, that is the, the way forward. What we, we normally see is that, yeah, there is this yeah, we are Africans and, and we want to come back to Africa and many of them will come. It's not easy to return home. I mean, the idea of returning to Africa is very wonderful, for, you know, but it's not easy, you know, when it comes to integrating, when it comes to finding a place to stay, when it comes to understanding, you know, the continental African and that continental African understanding that, that, that the diasporic African, it is, it is not easy. but. That should not, you know, um, um, stop the diasporans or the diasporic Africans and the continental Africans from from exploring and, and uh, ways uh, to, 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 to understand one another and to work. Um, Africa should not just be a holiday place for many diasporic Africans. It should be a place to actually you know, return to, um, and a place where such a return um, should actually um, lead uh, to, 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 to social change. Or I don't want to say revolution, but social change. So it's, it, 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 is, it is for all of us to, to work together. And the concept of African must again be interrogated who is an African is it just a label that one would just say I'm an African or it has it has a certain character it has a certain philosophy if you are an African then is it is it are you an African because of the way you dress are you an African because of the food you eat? Or there is more 
to being an African than just, you know, the language you speak and 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 the and the, and the, the shirt that you wear. I think we need to really think about this. And once we're able to understand the concept and the word African, and if we accept it, we're African, then we have to act in a certain way. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you very much. <laughs>Uh, Professor Valer is there. Well, that's one perspective of why Africa is not united. I'll tell you about some other perspective, but let's hear what some of you have been saying on social media about African uh, Union Day. Well, some of you have been watching this particular uh, video, and you say, Haruna Gadu Yakubu Messi says, I miss you, Professor de Valer. Valer, well, it appears that most of you seem to know him. Um, uh, my OAU lecturer, Deborah, says, Nana Boateng says, my history professor, well, uh, Larry George says, our greedy politicians, leaders, are blocking the growth and unity in Africa. They should be shamed to, to themselves. They should be ashamed, ashamed of themselves, I guess you want to say. And uh, the, a the AU has been rude in negative way. I'm not quite sure what your final... Uh, line means. We'll take some more comments on social media, but we can also hear from another perspective that's coming from the University of Ghana's political science department, where I've been speaking to Dr. Kumi Ansakoi, who is a senior lecturer there. He thinks that a lot has been achieved over the years as far as African unity is concerned, and that African countries uh, must begin to focus more on the positives achieved rather than feed off a sense of hopelessness, according to him. Before I bring you Professor Kumi Koi's interview, uh, let's see if we can hear some more of your comment on Facebook. Okay, well, let's listen to uh, Professor Kumi Koi as we gather your comments on Facebook to let you have a look at it. For so many years of independence, we should have been focusing upon Africa governance. We still remain the poorest of the continents. We still remain behind in many areas. We still remain marginalized. We still remain exploited. Mm. And therefore, it's very important that at this point in time, we should really be able to focus on how we can govern ourselves well. The assumption was that with independence, everything will be OK. Mm. We find independence for some 60 years or more for many countries. And so things are not OK for all of us. A few are making some progress, but the vast majority are stagnating behind. So I guess we should now focus on how to actually address the issue of governance and ensure that we realize the dreams that motivated our fight for independence. Mm, speaking of governance, what would you say the focus should be? We have democracy. I mean, here in Ghana, we go all over the place touting our democratic credentials, talking about how Ghana led the independence struggle and everything. I mean, exactly what should we focus on? We're, we're doing okay, aren't we? We aren't. Uh, there's a long way to go. Let's not forget that democracy is both an ideal, a goal, and a means to an end. It's a means to an end, it's a goal. That's the, for the best form of governance, so we must have it. But we just don't have it for having a sick. Okay. We have it for some purposes. And one is that it should be an instrument towards development. Mm. And the fact is that they are still a long, there's still a long way to go as far as our quest for proper democratization is concerned. And again, uh, there are problems with our governance. Yes, we have the facade of democracy. Yes, in many respects, we're making some progress in democratization. But the fact remains is that there's still some way to go Greater tolerance, for example, in many Africans, for example, there's lynching and many things are wrong. This year, for example, the EU has set a theme how to fight corruption, hmm. combating corruption for this year's celebration. And that's the problem of governance. We cannot really, so there are a lot of things to go. Hmm. I must say that uh, the AU was motivated, the OAU was motivated by two main struggles how to end apartheid and how to achieve independence for colonized Africa. Hmm. These two objectives have been achieved. And so we must go forward. And now in this era of globalization, there are still some things we, we still have to do. For example, we are behind in terms of development. That's why we have, for example, things like uh, sustainable development goals and then all that, the million development goals. That's yeah. what this is where set for Africans, especially. And so we have to ensure that we are able to actually achieve the fruits of independence. That is development and better improve lives for all. Mm, the and of the, the, yes, the, and the AU actually came to replace the OAU for a number yeah. of reasons. The OAU achieved the aim of decolonization 
and the aim of ending apartheid, but the AU had higher aims, how to achieve development, how to really unify Africa, and a lot more. And we've not really achieved these objectives completely. Mm. We still have a long way to go. How to better integrate Africa. The AU, if you go through its the, uh, charter of the AU, what they call this constitutive act, mm. there's the, uh, the third one has to do with the principles underlying the AU. And one of those principles is that African unity should, not, should not, not, not just be heads of states meeting to dine, wine, and talk. It should involve the ordinary African, the man in the street. But how? So there's, for example, the African parliament. So the heads of state don't just meet. Ministers don't just meet like it was done at the OE, OAU days. But that ordinary Africans can also, for example, the common market for Africa. For example, so institutions should actually cut across the whole Africa. And ordinary people should be involved. For example, freer movement of peoples and a lot more. Not only that, the principles also say that we should be committed to human rights and democratization. So for the first time, the AU has instead the principle that we can intervene in others' internal affairs in pursuit of certain goals, mm. to end genocide, to end human rights violations, and a lot more. So the AU is distinct from the OEU. It has got distinct objectives, and there's still a long way to go. We have problems of governance. Civil war strife are still parts of Africa, some African countries. Somalia, Libya, and many countries are in a mess. So at this point in time, there's a need to focus on governance, particularly corruption, which the AU has taken up as its theme for this year's celebration. Speaking of fighting corruption, the same leaders of the same countries that are known to be very corrupt go and have a meeting and decide that let's let's talk about ending corruption. Isn't that some kind of a big joke? When you are you know that these are people who are supervising over countries that if you should put them on the index, the corruption index, they don't they, they, they don't do they don't do any good. They have nothing good to write home about. These are the same people who get to sit all the time. Isn't it just a waste of money well, and a big joke? I, the picture is more complex than that. Okay. This time around, it's not just the leaders who are just going to talk about ending corruption. This time around, civil society is very much involved. This time around, the mass media is very much involved. This time around, some necessary conditions, for example, free discussion, democratization, civil society growing, have all been brought in. So it's not just up to leaders of states at all. Okay. There's a greater chance for ordinary people, for civil society, and for us all to be involved in the fight for corruption. So they serve as a check on those leaders of ours who still happen to be corrupt. They serve as a check, exposure, mm. naming and shaming, and a lot more. And you find that in many African countries, the media is very vibrant. In mm. many countries, including Ghana, you find that corruption is not easy to hide, it is exposed, and all that. And the exposure, but there is still corruption. And, the exposure, and there's course, still a lot of corruption. Of course, there's still a lot of corruption in all societies. But certainly, there was a lot of it in our types of society. And again, you find that now concrete measures are being taken to actually eradicate or to reduce the level of corruption. So it's not just a fight left to the leaders alone. I mean, this time around, society is more, more involved, the media is much more involved, and a lot more. And there are a lot of agencies which are combating corruption. But and you again, talk about. There's cross African collaboration, again, in the fight against corruption. Mm. You talk about the freedom of the media which i believe is part of uh, the things that you need in a democratized or in a properly uh, governed country which is one of the things that you've highlighted as the need for africans at the moment uh, speaking of free media in uganda journalists are uh, uh, arrested whilst they're doing um, live reports for example in Kenya they are beating them all over in Ghana which hosted the uh, World Press Freedom Day I mean a few weeks prior to the World Press Freedom Day my colleague was beaten and he's still at home it's been over beaten a month by beaten by the police it's been over a month it's been over a month and he's been at home he's still recuperating my producer who brought us here is still healing from six years it's been six years since he was beaten uh, he's still living with the scars from that these are the same leaders who go and sit down and decide to talk about an African uni a United Africa or a, an Africa that is properly governed it appears there's a missing link somewhere well there would have been if the picture was just as you painted. I mean, just leaders uh, from whom everything has changed. But the fact is that I said the game has changed. There's a game changer. There's greater involvement of society. And indeed, all that you say is true. 
I don't doubt any of that. But the point is that it is certainly better than it used to be some okay. 20, 30 years back. Okay. The level of abuse of journalists has reduced considerably, and much progress is being done. Society does not change immediately and suddenly, forever and ever. It takes time. Mm. Yeah, systemic change actually takes some time. So we would agree that in spite of all those shortcomings you point out, mm. there has certainly been a change okay. in the game. And in fact, these things that meet for the change should be sustained so the change can go on. So okay. the point I'm making is that the change is not coming just from the heads of states or our leaders. But now this time around, there's a greater involvement of civil society. And, and, that yes. and that is propelling us forward. And that is propelling us forward. So we yes. should perhaps do a lot more yes, of that. Yes, a lot more, yes. But yes, shouldn't there example, be institutions that make for uh, the inclusion of the ordinary people, civil oh, the, society the organizations? The AU Charter and which is institutions. The African Parliament is one. The African Court of Justice is another. Mm. And there are a lot more. The okay. African Court of Justice is one. The African uh, this, uh, Court is Human Rights Court is another such institution. Mm. And again, there's collaboration across all professions on the African scene. There is an African uh, Peace and Security Council and a lot more. So the institutional is collaboration. Of course, we are now growing as institutions. So they may not act perfectly, but I think the performance is better than the, it, it used to be in times past. Okay, and, and so fact, we should be able to build on it going forward. Yes, you see. it's an ongoing I, I, struggle. I, I, I'd like for you to maybe give us a few pointers as to how we can build on the successes made because as you say 30 years ago 20 years ago it wasn't the same how do we move on from here and we're looking at governance and the role of the media for example you know in in in, in a proper or in a better africa so how do we move on from from one where we is are actually now? strengthen these bonds of cooperation and collaboration it's very important the struggle should not be seen to be actually be confined to just one country. So you must have intra-African collaboration, mm. intra-African cooperation. And since we've used journalists as cases in point, mm. let me just say that there's greater, greater collaboration of journalists in the entire subcontinent. Journalists in Nigeria, in Ghana, throughout West Africa are collaborating. Now that's a very interesting yes. area for me personally, yes. because it's, it's, it happens to be one of the um, areas of my dissertation for my MA, yes. and it appears that African media actually are not interacting that much because there could be something breaking in Mali, something breaking in Nigeria, and we rely on the BBC, for example, to, to, to re re report that particular message. So it doesn't look it, it's well since this is my area i'm, I'm putting it to you that it's yes. not as yes it's the, more complex no, but, but, than but, but, you make so, it like so some listen okay. previously mm. every news came from reuters and certain mm. agencies right. today the pan-african news agency used to make a difference now it's not as vibrant as it used to be mm. virtually collapsed but today there's greater collaboration today for example social media there's a lot of collaboration yeah, the social media is, 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 is a game changer in many ways. So yes, officially there have been no collaboration at the governmental level. Mm -hmm. But we find that even social media, uh, human rights violation in Uganda is carried across to all parts of the world. So there's Through greater awareness, media. yes. There's greater awareness and all that. So there's certainly an improvement on the situation in times past. And then, you can't and easily muffle the press. You can't even impose lo lots of censorship in one country. Mm -hmm. Even if you do. The social media gives a chance to actually bypass that. Again, you can't hide the truth. So yeah. that's something that yes, and this people are, should, yeah, these are should, should leverage. And that to, is one way. To so greater more. collaboration would help. Okay. Again, greater involvement by society okay. would also be a game changer. I see. Well, I'm still talking to Dr. Kumi Ansakoi. He's senior lecturer at the University of Ghana's Political Science Department. And we're talking about African unity, how far Africa has come and how far we must go if we should achieve that unity that perhaps we all uh, yearn for. We've spoken about governance and the media and how we can build on what we have. We have, well, the work that has been done so far uh, to propel us forward. Now let's talk about politics and how it's placed in all this African unity. Um, is is Afri an African unity even achievable looking at a political landscape or the body politic of the African continent? Again, a very interesting, very tough question. Almost everybody agrees that Africa must unite, one way or the other. Mm. The problem is what you mean by un un unity or unification. For some people, they just want cooperation, collaboration, like brotherly existence. One brother is there, one brother is there. They recognize each other, but they lead their separate lives. Mm. So brotherly existence, that's what some mean. Somewhat an integral unification, like the, o like the US, yeah. one country. So there's disagreement as to the type of unification we, we actually. But history puts a lot of a lot of things. 
make other things come to Africa. So for this reason, we are bound to collaborate one way or the other. In terms of strategic uh, whatever real realities, in terms of geopolitics, Africa is such in a, in a common history such that we face common problems, such that we are so located that the problem somewhere affects the other country. Mm. For example, the political crisis in Togo would affect Ghana, refugee inflow, and a lot more. For example, Nigeria, with a population of over 200 million, if there should be a serious crisis in Nigeria, and even just one-tenth, one-tenth of the population come to Ghana, that would be more than Ghana's population. But if the one-tenth is already not yes. here, we see a lot yeah, of Nigerians yeah, around here anyway. If Nigerians mm. come to Ghana as refugees, that figure one-tenth of Nigeria mm. is more than the national population. Oh. Yeah, and there are examples to guide us, the Palestinians, Israel, the Mez, the Jordan, etc. So we must be very careful. We are so integrated geographically that we can't see ourselves as being separate. So shouldn't that make it easier for an African unity, for Africans coming it together? It makes it easier. Unfortunately, there are forces and there are historical factors also which actually keep us divided. One is the problem of language, Anglophone, Anglophone Africa, Francophone Africa, and a lot more. So the language, one is institutional development. Mm. How do we harmonize and bring all the institutions together in a speedy and smooth way? Then one sometimes is political will. Many of our leaders are so short-sighted. And in fact, every politician thinks more of the short term than the long term, mm. how to maintain power. And so many, many of our leaders lack the political will to really work towards unity at all costs. So there are various reasons that keep us united. One, two is foreign intervention, foreign interf uh, interference. Mm. And again, if we do unite, it will certainly disrupt the interests of certain ca countries mm. which stand to gain with other developments now. So there are many factors that actually explain our disunity. Mm, and you have studied this area. And so, if I may ask, are there typical examples? Because you, you read about some of these things. It's like the countries are there. We know the, 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 the agenda. Why are our leaders, African leaders, not able to bypass this agenda and, uh, do, what the, and do the need for? As I said, one is short-term political interest of these leaders. For some, it is better to be president of a village. <laughs> the president of a village... Than, than to, to be a general be, secretary yes, of, yeah, of, 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 of a big of, town. Oh, yeah. Of a big town. <laughs> so some are monarchs in their small, small, mm. little Putian states. And they stand to lose, in their point of view, if they give in to the greater, way for greater unity. So there are vested interests, actually, in this particular situation. Who not want us to unite? What are the these other? countries, or which are these countries that, how I mean, over the years we've known like uh, America has its own interest, and in all these countries have their indeed at uh, uh, during the uh, getting to the end of colonialism or the or the scramble for Africa, everybody was was trying to get a piece of it. It appears that it's uh, something that has still been inherited. We're still a lot of people will say that we're still not economically independent. Yeah. Which are these? And at this point, it's uh, not so uh, much countries as governments and regimes. Okay. Let me give you an example. When Kwame Nkrumah spoke of African unity, hmm. he was opposed by almost everybody. After his death, President Nyerere, who was one, one of those who opposed him, came to Ghana to say that one of the things he regrets was his opposition to Nkrumah's idea of African unity. And that's a very sensible idea. Hmm. So it's not so much a country as individuals and personalities. Let me give you Nkrumah as an example. When Nkrumah was fighting for African unity, Nigeria and Patwa Balewa and others again opposed the idea. They thought that Ghana wanted to actually, had very grandiose ideas, that Nkrumah wanted to actually become president of Africa mm. and all that at their expense. So it's a matter of personalities, regimes, and then their interests, not so much countries. Yeah, and that is really the situation. So how to actually subdue this parochial interest is the big problem. It's a big problem. And for again, how to look at the future, because in every case, unification always entails costs being borne by somebody. Take the case of Germany. When East and West united, much of the cost was borne by Western Germany, but now all that is over, more or less. Yeah. So certainly some countries will lose more in the short term. Others will have to gain more. But in eventually, it will be the overall benefit of everybody. From, from everything that you have said, uh, from a very commonsensical point of view, I dare say that an African unity may never, ever happen. That's possible. That's possible. That is possible. Well, where does but that it, leave that, us? That, that, it, that is possible. Well, where does and that leave us that, as Africans? If that, and, if, and if that situation persists, unfortunately, if that situation persists, then unfortunately, clearly, certain countries are not viable in terms of geography, in terms of economics, in terms of everything else, mm. and they're going to marginalize forever. 
but it's our greater interest if we should unite and form one coherent, strong Africa. Luckily, starting from where? Starting from, for, for example, that started, we have these regional groupings, ECOWAS, SADC, and the rest. Mm -hmm. And these are very good starting points, not the best. For example, if you know the history of the OAU, nobody envisaged the establishment of the OAU in May of 1963. There were those like Nkrumah who wanted the complete unification of Africa, US Africa. Mm -hmm. That's what they wanted. And there were those like Nigeria and Atapa Balewa and others who wanted Africa to remain separate, mm. no unification. But the genius of uh, Hila Selassie was that he got these two rival groups to come together to agree on a compromise organization, and that was the OAU. And we were not quite sure how far we have come with the, with the uh, OAU and the African oh, unity because... we've made some progress. Let's not overlook some progress. For example, we have agreed that there should be an OAU instead of living, living our separate lives. We've agreed that there should be some form of co collaboration. That was the OAU. Over well. time, we've realized that it's not good enough. We've agreed, for example, that Addis Ababa should be the permanent seat of the headquarters. We've agreed on a whole number of principles that AU has very interesting objectives, very interesting principles, and all mm. this has been agreed on. But a few progress things. has been made, mm. but we fall short of the real target, the overall target. And of course, it takes time to bring about social transformation. And, and, and which is when I asked, starting from where, because that is a crucial conversation that we all should have if we indeed are serious uh, about uh, an African unity. But of course, there are interests. The African Union has spoken about setting up, you know, ideas about setting up a human rights court, for example, ideas about setting up a central bank, uh, a monetary Common fund, Association. you know, yes. and by 2023, we're looking at the common currency. Yes. And we've seen how political, how much of a political football has been played, even with the common currency. That doesn't give any person of perhaps my generation or a younger generation than mine any serious hope of an African unity. Yes, those are problems. There are some convergence criteria that sometimes depart at countries from the realization of those goals. But then those are, but let's not forget that there's also the other side of the coin. Mm. I think you focus on the negative side, but that's not the entire story. Mm -hmm. There's also a very common side. The ordinary African is not bound by the boundaries. The mm -hmm. ordinary African are crossing boundaries, going to Europe, move from one country to the other in this regard. And that's another problem. That shows you that they don't accept these colonial boundaries. But, but that's that another shows problem. That going to be it, 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 is easier, it is easier to travel outside Africa than it is to travel within Africa. Has anybody but told agree, you this? But Africans are still yes, but that, it doesn't make any sense to me at all. That no, doesn't make sense to you. In spite of the boundaries, in spite of the wish of the political elites, we cross from one country to the other. We Difficulty, with yes, much difficulties. That shows that we are not bound by the elite thinking at all. There is much unity for the ordinary person. The other African is moving, disregarding boundaries and doing everything. In Somalia, in Togo, in Ghana, in uh, Kenya, everywhere, people are disregarding boundaries. Ghanaians are moving across the Sahara and other Africans and then going to Europe or elsewhere, wherever they want to go to. They disregard national boundaries. Mm. They disregard the rules of the elite. So that shows you that this uh, restriction is really a problem of the elites. That's all. We, really, but the uh, ordinary person does not really accept. But this the ordinary person is really under the difficulties that they have to go through if they have to do a cross border business, for example, within Africa, even within West Africa. And that's what I was saying that it doesn't really make sense. And even then, too, and even then, we would have to agree that some progress has been made. For example, take, take uh, Ghana, this idea of, uh, take ECOWAS, hmm. this idea of uh, uh, free movement. And then this three month period, free movement and all that. Take, I take this issue of this planning migration mm -hmm. and all that. So even there, for the other person, some progress has been made. These are not good enough and these are not well regulated, but some progress has, has been made. You don't need visa to go from one other country to the other. So some progress has been made. It's not entirely as dark as that. There's hmm. some progress to be made. I, I like you your optimism. I like your optimism. I don't have optimism at all. <laughs> no, you sound very optimistic. You no, sound very no, optimistic no. to me. And I'm, I, well, maybe, I, I'm wondering, when you were much younger, were you hopeful of an African unity? Indeed, when I was much younger, I really desired unity just as you do. And I was also as impatient as you are. As, as you, then, as you, but, as you sit here now, now, are you disillusioned? But, but at, at my age now, I'm rather more hopeful. Because really? At, yes, because at my age now, that was the era of the dictators, the era of the okay. Amins, the era of the Eyadimes, the era of the dictators in Africa. But these people have all passed away. They've passed away. 
Okay. And change is coming, even though it's coming very slowly. So rather, age has made it more, has made it more hopeful. And again, the new generation, in this era of globalization, you are aware of what is happening in the other country. In this era of globalization, it's easier to move on from Ghana okay. to elsewhere. So people are just moving. So are you home hopeful? in Nigeria? People didn't bother about Nigeria's national boundaries. All of us rushed to Nigeria. Uh, Liberia, people were there. It didn't just affect Liberians because we all went there. So the ordinary person disregards, even in those days, and we are not in the era of globalization. But if you're talking about any serious achievement of unity, it doesn't take, it may take the ordinary pe people putting pressure on the government, leaders. but then the leaders will have to be ready. Now you spoke about political will, which is yes. lacking, obviously. So without the, without the political will, the people may be desiring, maybe putting a certain level of pressure, but there will still be the reluctance that because an African There's leader, no interest, exactly, presidents wants to be president of their countries rather than uh, join a bigger country. Where, but this is workable. Sometimes it's much more than that. For example, again going back into history, Ghana's 1960 constitution gave the president power to surrender Ghana's independence in pursuit of African unity. Mm. Today is not so. Today we just can't say that Ghana is no more there and that we are part of Africa. There are hmm. constitutional provisions that have to be met. So all these okay. are some of the realities that have to be faced. So it's much more complex, much right. more difficult. Right. Well, let me end this conversation with you by uh, asking you what you make of the readmittance uh, of Morocco, for example, after 33 years. Since you are very optimistic, I'm sure this must, be, this must be one of the areas of optimism for you. Morocco rejoins, but we're still looking at Madagascar and Mali, uh, which are countries that are still, you know, on suspension, if you like. Uh, from where lies the hope in these cases, and how does it help that African Just what African you said. Unity? Madagascar, this, this was suspension, mm -hmm. not dismissal. Morocco was not suspended. Morocco pulled away yes. out of the organization. Right. Morocco tried to join the EU. It was not. So you think that admitted. they're just back because they didn't get the That's chance one of to the join reasons. the EU? One, they tried repeatedly. They were turned down by the EU. Again, again, there has been a big problem about Africa. How do we conceptualize the word Africa? For some people, Africa refers to people of Caucasian, people of black race. Hmm. That's all. For others, Africa must be understood in a geographical sense, referring to the entire geography, what the government call Africa, the map of Africa. Now, now, luckily, the latter idea is gaining ground. And I'm happy that Morocco is actually seeing that, in terms of strategy, in terms of geopolitics, it is really part of Africa and it's coming around. So that again is, makes me more hopeful. They did everything, they withdrew, they could survive. But then they are being pressured to realize that they are really African. How helpful is their comeback to the cause of African unity? It's a very good example. It shows that even if you go back, you have nowhere else to go to. You are really African. So you are just coming back to yourself. That's one. But there are still problems that must be uh, faced. For example, the Sahrawi Arab Republic, the issue of their independence, and Morocco's, Morocco's uh, effort to actually annex that country are issues that have to be tra tracked over. Mm. But they are coming back in itself a very progressive thing. It shows that we are one family and there may be disagreements, but ultimately we all come back. Mm. It shows that they also realize that they can't exist permanently out of touch with Africa. The, one of the major things uh, that's keeping Africa, I believe, where it is, is funding. Yes. If you take the EU, for example, they have, uh, they have people who are consistent fund, uh, uh, funding partners or funding countries. For example, the United yeah, States yeah, yeah. of Africa. Exactly. So these are people with huge economies that are pushing money into the union. So they make it what it is. In Africa, we don't seem to have any any of such. Um, we're not quite sure who could be. Now we're look, thinking of the human rights court. We're the, thinking of the, the central contrary, bank. But who the is contrary, going to On be? the contrary, the AU was formed because an African chose to bankroll the transformation from the OAU to AU. That African is Gaddafi. Libya. They look at Libya. Yes, but Libya. look at Libya now. They paid the dues of all countries that were owing and bankrolled. So if I said it and you know that it bankrolled the transformation from the AU to the OAU. Now it is true that the general picture is that Africa actually is somewhat marginalized. But certain countries are doing well, relatively. Such as such African countries are making much progress. And the idea is that those countries can be in a position to actually contribute to Give me Africa. examples of oh, Nigeria, South Africa. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really doing well. Even Rwanda is doing fairly well. So the idea is that these countries that are coming out of this abysmal pit actually would propel others. Let's not forget that unification is not only for the rich. 
the poor can also unite and advance their interests. Yeah, but you need someone. That, that's why I gave you examples about setting up a human rights court, setting up a central bank. And some, some of these are really taking off the ground, and we are making progress. We because are even our even headquarters, the European Union is now faced with a lot of serious problems. Well, we can leave the EU, you, you to talk about their problems. Whilst we do, because we, they are steps ahead of us, so we should perhaps deal with our problems. But speaking of dealing with our problems, you can look at our our headquarters, uh, AU headquarters, for example, which was built for by the Chinese. And not long ago, we heard that there were some that the place was bugged. I mean, you don't have the money, so anybody else who wants to put in money has the ability to influence you. Shouldn't African leaders now be taking? Uh, 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 I mean, this is like basic. Fundamental knowledge, things that you should know fundamentally, that anybody doing such a thing for you, you either be extra careful or you don't let them do it at all. I think we shouldn't put the cat before the horse. I think that first and foremost, we should be agreed that there's need for unity. Everything else is secondary. If we agreed on the need for unity, the rest can be done. But don't yes, we agree yes, already? Yes, there was no money. There was no money. China actually offered money. Not the headquarters for us. That is a scary matter. And Having done, even if, even if they did, what do we do next? Having discovered that, what do we do? We can later on abandon those borders and do something else. So let's put the cat and the horse in their proper positions. And if we do that, I guess we can get we can get round. Okay. Well, I am personally looking forward to 2023, uh, where yes. the, the 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 continent is looking forward to a common currency. And I want to believe that the right things, the homework has been done properly as we anticipate that common currency because there are also a lot of issues that could arise from that but doc let me take your very final words african unity african unity today we're looking at uh we're, we're home we're not working uh, our, our kids went to school all dressed yesterday all dressed in uh, african attire and all what is the significance if anybody watched this interview what should they take away from them as being something important from an African Union discussion? First and foremost, I'm enthused. I share your worry, I share your concern, and also share your desire for greater peace of unification mm. and integration. I share all that, all those. But that does not mean that I should also overlook the progress made. So first, of, first and foremost, I, I'm, I'm very pleased to know that Africans have become aware of their oneness. Right. In spite of their differences, in spite of colonialism and its history, in spite of different location and all that, we see ourselves as Africans. That is an achievement. That's a good thing. Okay. In a continent where tribalism and ethnicity counts a lot, it's very important that we have that particular perception. Again, you have all shades of colors in Africa, but we see ourselves, the very black, the very tall, the very short, pygmies that we find in Africa, the tallest that we find in Africa, all shades that we find in Africa. I'm pleased that in spite of these differences, we see that we have a lot in common and that we are the Africans. All right. The allegation that the president is supposed to have said about Africans, that our place is whatever, the mentionable word. You all mean this the, is, the, the yes, U.S. president's yes, yes, description that, yes, of that, Africa? Yes, that allegation. All this shows that on the global scene, whether we like it or not, we, are, we have a particular perception, a particular image, a particular reality. We are also marginalized. And again, we are suffering from brain drain. Our best footballers, our best intellectuals, our best... Comes back to governance, away. lack yes. of everything yes. that makes the people so want to stay. we see ourselves as one people, and we see too, not only we see ourselves as one people, Africans, we see the need for unification of some sort to actually propel us forward. There is disagreement as to how to achieve that unification. We are not making that progress as much as we should, but I think we should not discount the fact that some gains have been made and we have to actually expect more in the years ahead. I must confess, I really like uh, Dr. Uh, Kumi says optimism about African uh, unity and African unity. But of course, when else should you be more optimistic than on AU Day? So on this day, we wish you all a very great uh, African Union Day. Think oneness and, well, I don't know if I will still have enough hope to wait, but I don't have a choice. Certainly, I don't have a choice, but well, we still owe it to the continent to be uh, more aware of our oneness, as uh, Dr. Kumi says. Let me take you through a few comments on Facebook and then we'll go back to Cape Coast, where uh, there's a lot of talk about Tramador, even on AU Day. So we put the question there for you to uh, tell us whether or not you know the number of countries in uh, the African continent and... Uh, so a lot of you have been talking about it. Imano Do says, okay, to those of us coming 
to so those of us coming to check the comment for answer, you're welcoming them. Um, Kweku says that there are some previous comments. There are some. Pre it looks like these are more on more on the back of the previous comment. Um, yeah. So Mauko Mauko says, "Let me call my history teacher and get back to you." I'm not sure about the 54 some are mentioning here. Okay, and that's why Kweku Ofori comes to say 54, including the latest South Sudan. So some education there for you, Mauko. And uh, Ma Haj Shaoyu says. Uh, well, you don't like the day, the celebration, and you think that it should be stopped. Where is the unity? That's your question. Very good question. Isa Gustavo says, did you say does we have, the, we actually said does Africa have, because Africa is one continent, okay? So Felix Entry says, we only dress nicely in Rome. There's nothing in mind, and you laugh. Dramatic Dramani says, what's the correct number? 54. Lib Pretty Queen says, when you people get the correct answer, you should call me back. Okay, and you go on and on. Someone says 54 countries. Yeah, so not, not, well, everybody, not everybody knows, but a good number of us seem to know that there are 54 countries uh, in this continent. So those are some of your comments on social media. I hope that you're having a very uh, good rest at home, by the way. But let me tell you what's happening in Cape Coast. The Pharmaceutical Council joined some junior and senior high schools there to commemorate the African Union Day. Now, the council used the occasion to educate the young people on the risks they expose themselves to if they abuse tramadol. Join us is Richard Kojo Inako reports that many junior and senior high school students uh, dressed in African prints as well, just like yesterday, uh, much younger ones did in school. Here is a report. This is the University of Cape Coast Community Basic School located at Abra in Cape Coast. The children dressed in their various African outfits to celebrate the African Union Day. The teachers were not left out. They dressed in a similar fashion to depict the day. At the Academy of Christ the King, the students and the teachers were in the same mood. African dresses were worn by the students while diverse cultural displays were done to commemorate the occasion. The pharmaceutical council in the central region went round some of the schools to educate them on the harmful effects of the abuse of tramadol. Deputy Director of Pharmacy at the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital, Robert Inkum, tells Joy News the youth must be empowered to stand against the abuse of tramadol. We realize that the devastating effects of tramadol on the youth is so enormous. And our teenagers, our young girls in the secondary school are also vulnerable because they don't have all the facts about the medicine. And they are easily influenced by friends, colleagues, and uh, relatives. And so we thought it important that on this day of AUD, where they have some time off their busy, normal curricular, we could come in to provide some uh, independent information on this topical issue of trauma, so that we highlight the devastating consequences it has on them and then even on their studies. When the people are also well informed, then they are better able to make the right decisions and even avoid them if even they, they are presented to them. Headmistress of Academy of Christ the King, Florence Yang of Fair, tells Joy News the fight against trauma should be fought starting with the children. Uh, we as a school decided to celebrate it today. So what we did was to uh, ask the students and the workers as well to come in the African way to commemorate the day in advance. Yeah. So students came in in cloth, in uh, batakari and all that and uh, it's, it's, it's all fun just to uh, celebrate the day. The, the abuse of tramadol these days is quite disturbing so it's not only a day to celebrate but also to learn is that uh, the abuse of the drug tramadol could cause A, B, C, D and whatever, yes. So these students have learned at the end of the day, yes, they have learned something and I am sure that uh, it's going to go a long way to help in the fight against uh, tramadol generally in the country and in the world. Richard Kwejo Joy News, Cape Coast.